Hello and good morning, Revolution, and welcome back to our program. Hey, Scott. What's hey, up? Jim. Been a while. Yeah, right, right. We haven't broadcast since when? Since uh, December. Yeah, December. since uh, before the holidays. But you know what I say? I say even the good Lord rested on the seventh day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs a break. Yeah. Um, and uh, we took a little one, but we're back. Um, hopefully back in style and back with some good politics and some decent programming. A uh, lot's been going on, Scott, since uh, we last spoke. There's, uh, there's yeah. a trial. The boy is on trial. Yeah. On trial in Washington, D.C. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's petty of me, but I'm, you know, I'm glad he seems to be uh, feeling the heat a little bit. You know, he's been yeah, you know, the Trump, he tweeted, I think about 160 times yesterday. It was <laughs> yeah. The largest number of, I guess he ain't got nothing else to do, <laughs> to sit back and play with his, um, you know, um, phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, it, and, you know, you can, you can sort of see, um, you know, we, we've insisted kind of since the beginning that the, 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 the level of contempt for democracy and for the mm. will of the people uh, on display uh, from the Trump regime is really just mind boggling. Um, you know, uh, Mitch McConnell all but, or not even all, declaring openly that the, the, the outcome was a foregone conclusion. Yes. That, you know, no evidence was going to be no new evidence was going to be presented, no witnesses, no documents. Um, uh, Nothing. Really, yeah, it's a travesty. Reminds, it reminds me of that re refrain from some of those R&B songs, you know? Mm -hmm. They say, shake your hands in the air, act like you just don't care. <laughs> they just don't care. <laughs> just do, do whatever they yeah. want, you know? And, uh, but there's going to be a uh, reckoning one one I'm one way or another. Ready. Now we're in November. Yeah, you know. Now I'm and in November. Rob, huh? Now and in November, because a lot yeah. of those, uh, yeah. a lot of those, uh, searching for a, a word I can use in a broadcast, um, Republicans, I guess one could say, uh, you know, aren't we can't impeach them right now, but we'll get them out in in November. But what do you say, Scott, to the idea that we're joining with the deep state and the uh, big bourgeoisie and all of those jokers and this impeachment that is a phony thing? Why are you Communist Party people allied with those folks? What do you say to that? Right, right now, the, the, the main question, the main political question is, are we going to head toward democracy? Or fascism, you mm. know, as, as the as the crisis of capitalism deepens, um, are the solutions that our country reaches for going to be people's democratic, progressive solutions, or are they going to be um, terroristic, reactionary, fascist ones? Mm. Um, there is a section of the of the ruling class, or there are, I should say, there are forces within the ruling class that are averse to fascism. They they cannot lead this democratic struggle, but they can participate in it. The working class and its allies, the working class and, and oppressed people must lead it. But um, you know, there, are, there are sections of the ruling class that for one reason or another, to one degree or another, will, will participate. Well, let me ask you a question about that. Now, do you really think that the working class is leading this fight at this point? I mean, is that what's going on um, in, in Congress? In your opinion, I think the uh, w without the the upsurge of um, working class militancy and also um, you know progressive uh, militancy, which was who are very linked, you know, as as, as we know, uh, this impeachment never would have happened without the the efforts, particularly in the twenty eighteen elections, that that reshaped the House of Representatives, giving it the most progressive and the most diverse composition in its history. Um, you know, we, we wouldn't be, Trump wouldn't be on trial in the Senate right now. 
So uh -huh. this is a product of the resistance, you're saying, to mm -hmm. the um, machinations and double dealings and corruption of Trump and company. Well, I think that's an important uh, a point, though I think that it's also important. And then there was the strike wave, you know, yeah, absolutely. growing militancy amongst the uh, trade union movement. We saw that with the teachers and the uh, auto workers and so on and so forth, the fast food workers, uh, service workers. It was a big strike up in Connecticut of food workers and so on. So that's obviously part of it as well. Also, um, and on the, on the, um, you know, the, the, the movement for, for the rights of immigrants and refugees, um, the, the women's movement, uh, which just um, had another, uh, the women's march was last weekend, right? Yes. So, and th those are also, um, they're, they're separate from this, this uh, upsurge of, of working class militancy, but they're, they're intertwined with it, right? They, they, the, their goals uh, overlap. And, and yeah, and I would imagine that these are mainly working class women, mm -hmm. you know, uh, broadly defined. And so the uh, fight for women's equality, which is the democratic fight, mm -hmm. uh, emerges to a certain degree with the uh, class struggle fight, you know, because Absolutely. they less wages than, than, than men. And, and, uh, and, and the fight for equality is part of that whole process, not directly the same, but related um, in very important ways. Now, you said that capitalism is in crisis, uh, but the stock market is doing well. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been doing some writing on uh, trade issues in China. Uh, what's your main thesis with regard to that? So looking at this, this uh, trade deal with China that was signed by, um, by Trump, um, it's you know, it, I think what, what, what I'm interested in is the way it, it shows how the ambitions of the ruling class and the uh, specific nature or strategy of Trumpism kind of uh, fit together. Um, so what you see in this, in this trade deal is um, the, the, the first and biggest section is about uh, intellectual property rights, which is what uh, the ruling class has been pushing for um, since at least since 2013, and really, really before that. You know, they've been saying, you know, China is um, forcing us to give up our technology and our, our patents and, and this and that. So, and, and that is clearly, you know, Trump, the Trump regime has amplified that, um, like taken the, the kind of belligerence against China to a new level. Um, at the same time, uh, it's not just an intellectual property agreement. It, it has, um, uh, China has committed to buying $200 billion worth of, uh, or $200 billion additional in US goods over the next two years. Um, and that is, you know, a, a reflection of kind of Trump's appeal to um, a, a section of the American working class to, um, to industry and manufacturing, uh, sort of this idea of, you know, we're gonna rebuild American jobs, China's gonna, you know, um, gonna bring the jobs back from China or-, or, or Okay. Or so intellectual property rights and his jobs. Uh, and uh, and a, a lot of agricultural, um, China also uh, is going to give more favorable treatment to some agricultural imports from the U.S. Mm. Uh, right. Lower the inspection standards and, and things like that. Um, and it's important to note that uh, this this isn't um, you know China's not a a captive victim in that it's it's the second biggest second most powerful economy in the world. Um, and uh, it seems like a lot of uh, what they've agreed to um, are things that. Um, may in fact benefit uh, uh, Chinese people, particularly in their access to, um, you know, certain American products that, one of the things that, that um, was pointed out in an article in, uh, in the Chinese, from the Chinese uh, government news agency was that uh, Chinese consumers desire American goods and this will facilitate um, 
that. Interesting. We're going to have to do a program on trade. And uh, because you know that trade pact was also just passed uh, between the United States, Canada, and uh, Mexico. And there are diverse opinions about it. You know, the AFL CIO is supporting it, except the machinist union is saying, uh oh, wait a minute. I don't think so. This is not a good thing for us. And I noticed that uh, Mr. Sanders, Bernie Sanders, who, by the way, is according to the last CNN poll, is leading the Democratic. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. We'll see if that holds. Let's hope so. But um, the uh, Bernie is saying no to to the trade pact. No, it's going to take away jobs, and and uh, so we need to focus in on that a little bit and find out what's really going on so that the, we can... The interesting thing about that, that Mexico, Canada, um, USA uh, pact was, uh, th there are indeed some, some very, very strong protections for um, or the possibility, let's say, of strong protections for labor. So in, in most of the provisions, um, you'll find something saying, you know, of course, you know, countries, uh, this, this should not be taken to uh, overrule the, the, the sovereign right of a, of a nation to provide for the public health or safety of its people, whatever, which is different from, from previous trade deals, right? On the other hand, um, there's also in, in a lot of the most advanced, most progressive language, there are footnotes saying, um, basically, this doesn't apply to the United States or um, the United States um, uh, is assumed to already have met this or, or what have you. So we kind of- There are little loopholes. As loopholes well. for the US, loopholes. but but at least, you know, um, you can see that, that uh, for example, the, the victory of um, Manuel Lopez Obrador in, in Mexico um, has really, it is reflected there in the, this insistence on the right of, um, of Mexico, for example, to maintain standards for, for public health and safety and, and so forth. Yeah, our comrades say that there's a deep going democratic process taking place in Mexico now. We're gonna, we had a webinar on it the other week and we'll be sharing that with our um, uh, viewers uh, very soon and readers uh, of our website. So stay tuned for that. Another now, thing we've been talking about though is, is, um, is anti-Semitism. Uh, we recently released a, a statement um, on, on the fight against anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic violence. Could you sort of uh, delve into that a little for us? Well, you know, there's been a huge increase, you know, um, and the Trump administrator ha administration, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know that they have any good administrators, <laughs> but the administration uh, is an incubator for um, racist and uh, xenophobic and uh, and anti-Semitic views. And they have a big support base in the extreme right. And they think uh, these boys, they think that they have a green light to do whatever they want. You know, they marched in Charlottesville saying Jews will not replace us. And Trump said there were good people on both sides mm -hmm. of that. And, and so um, the Communist Party, you know, as a, um, party that stands for equality and against ra racism has to speak out on this issue. We cannot be silent. And, um, and, and uh, it's an important uh, issue because the uh, forms of unity in our country between different peoples uh, have always included the uh, Jewish people who have historically played an important role in the struggle for democracy and equality. Black Jewish unity was always an important uh, and remains an important uh, dimension of the uh, democratic front, let's say. Um, and uh, so the left, I think, uh, and the Communist Party in particular has to take, I think, a principled stand on the uh, uh, issue. And we're gonna see it in the elections and in the struggle uh, around, because of course, Trump and them are trying to court a section of the uh, Jewish vote. And I don't think they're gonna be very successful. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get a section at the same time of, of the Jewish vote, uh, but also to, to bring in and sort of uh, bring that alt-right anti-Semitic uh, section into their 
electoral coalition. And, and that's, yeah. I, now there are some things that we have to dig in on a little bit more. Um, the the anti-Semitism statement was a first essay in that regard, but we're also going to have to uh, uh, deal with the issue of uh, of uh, Israel and the uh, Palestinian question, and uh, we have some ideas about, and I want to broach them now uh, about exploring that uh, uh, both here uh, and with and abroad with some of our international friends and comrades and partners. So stay tuned for that. I want to return before we go to the uh, 2020 uh, election, the Iowa caucuses is taking place in just a few weeks and I don't know who's leading there, um, but your homeboy, uh, uh, Mr. Biden, seems to be why are you shaking your head you know he's from your state he's he's uh, he's from a, a a tax haven or whatever delaware is he lives in delaware but he was born and raised in pennsylvania i'm from ohio i live in new york but <laughs> you know i mean my i'm not going to disown my guys i was i was i was born in, in and raised in pennsylvania but politically my my home is chicago that's where <laughs> i got active that's where i okay Okay, well, uh, anyway, so on the presidential race, uh, it's, it's uh, Bernie is ahead. And uh, there's been some disunity in the progressive camp. Mrs. Warren making, saying that Bernie said this and that, and Bernie saying he didn't say it. And then Mrs. Clinton saying nobody likes Bernie. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm not gonna go with respect to how Obama handled that issue back in 2008 with respect to Mrs. Clinton. Uh, but um, I found the whole thing a little, you know, disconcerting, you know, because for a long time, the, 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 the more progressive candidates had maintained a certain unity and alliance. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, when um, things got a little bit more uh, tense and stressful that kind of evaporated and that wasn't a good thing it was and you know what it threatens the election it, it really so does. what position should we take scott with respect I mean, to, I mean that's the question i i think you know recognizing that uh the the main sort of um ideological split or whatever at the moment of the primaries is between, um, let's say the, the, the Biden Bloomberg sort of centrist uh, camp and the progressive Sanders and Warren program, um, you know, uh, as regards um, student debt relief, um, uh, as regards Medicare for all, the, the main split is there. And the ruling class is really, really trying hard to disorganized progressives to, to separate, you know, separate them into warring camps. Um, obviously unity is the key at, at, at every phase. Um, uh, so in the, in the primaries, unity around that, around those progressive issues that both uh, Bernie and uh, Elizabeth Warren are, are fighting for. And, you know, when it, when it comes to the general election, unity against the Trump regime um, and, and remembering that it's not just the candidate who decides uh, what an election means, it's also the composition of the forces fighting for that candidate. Um, yeah, that's a very important issue. And you know what I think? I think that in order to win this election, you, you're gonna need, the first thing you need, number one, is a movement. That's the first, it has to be an electoral movement. People have to be inspired to come out and, uh, and vote. And therefore it just can't be anti-Trump. It has to be anti-Trump, but it's gotta be more, it's got to be a program. That's the first thing. Second thing is that there has to be a woman and a person of color on the ticket, in my opinion, you know? That's gonna be, don't try what you did in 2016. That ain't gonna happen, that ain't, that ain't happening. Um, and let's see, I had four. So the first thing was a movement. The second thing uh, was, uh, oh, second thing was a person of color and a woman on the ticket. And the third thing is that there has to be unity. 
between the broad center and the broad left. Unity, you know, they gotta come together. And the fourth thing I think is that, you know, voters who have not been participating in the process have to be brought in and energized and registered and motivated, which relates to movement and program and who the candidates are. You know what I'm saying? And also, and also to a, a really big kind of um, uh, ideal or theoretical and strategic question, which is the, the role of voter suppression uh, in the, the power of the most oh, it's huge. It's class. Huge. It's and the importance of, you know, the, the fight against voter suppression has been going on in this country for over a century and a half. It's a civil war. I mean, it's and, unbelievable. And, and we need to finally win this thing. We need to finish our democratic revolution. You know, it's, yeah. So th th this is a, um, voter suppression is a huge part of this. Yes, yeah, we need deep going radical reforms in this country, you know, because the crisis is just getting out of out of hand. Well, look, we're going to close in just a minute, but we got a discussion question of the month that's coming up. Uh, what is it, Scott? Um, the discussion question of the month uh, says that um, CPUSA has always recognized that we need to build unity between um, black, brown, and white workers within the working class, but also build unity between the whole working class and the uh, movements and struggles of racially and nationally oppressed people um, in their fights for equality. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we see that unity being built today? What are the, uh, what are the fronts on which it's being built um, and, and how can CPUSA most effectively contribute to so What you're saying is you got class on the one side, and you got democracy on the other, equality, mm -hmm. equal rights. You talk about democracy, we're talking about equal rights. And that's just not political rights, but also social and economic rights. And so you're talking about how they're gonna converge yep. and how to interrelate and interpenetrate. Interesting. Yep. And, and, and how, do we, um, how do we further the, the understanding of, um, of the democratic movement uh, around that issue. Go to cpusa.org. Look at the slider. It'll be up. Uh, it'll be up today. And participate in the discussion. Yeah, and we thanks have for all inquiring minds, and we want to know what you think. <laughs> uh, thanks to everyone who participated in our December and, and early January discussion. Um, it went on a little longer than expected because we got uh, so many uh, submissions and. You know, and with the holidays, we were uh, on break for a little bit, um, but there's still stuff being put up. Uh, so thanks. Mm -hmm.